when we're discussing primitive bow strings, we know that a lot of different materials and resources were used um, from plant fiber to animal resources. And what I've made a lot of and have to show here today is Sanu bowstrings. This is made out of the back strap tendon of a white-tailed deer. <clears throat> and here we have an example of some of that fiber when it's pulled apart. <clears throat> I've also used hickory bark to make bowstrings. I've used stinging nettle, I've used dog bane, and I've used a lot of linen or flax. We'll cover those at a later time, but what we wanna look at today is how do we make the best primitive string that we can make and how do I make it easy to show you guys how to make it. So although Sanu is great, Sanu is great because it has very, very high breaking strength, where it struggles is that the fibers are relatively short. So when you're making a string and you're twisting these fibers in, <clears throat> you're twisting your cordage up, you're gonna have a lot of areas where it tapers out and you're going to have a lot of splicing in. You're going to have a lot of areas where you're splicing in new material. So where all of those splices are, it's, it's getting weaker every time. Even if you're very careful and try to maintain your, your thickness and your diameter, here's the, the crummiest one that I have and I'll show you an example of it. And this is, uh, this was made out of leg tendon. You can see how rough that is. <clears throat> the other thing with Sanu, the, the biggest drawback is, is the shorter fibers, but it's incredibly strong. What it is though, compared to other fibers, is heavy. So the lightest Sanu string <clears throat> that I have is here, and I'm measuring this in grains. This, this sinew string, and it's been coated with wax to help it not absorb moisture. That's an issue, a, a minor issue with uh, animal uh, based strings, whether that's rawhide or gut or sinew. But you can see it's a little bit thicker because it's been coated with that mixture, and it's got a <clears throat> It's served pretty heavy on the end. That's served with thin rawhide on the eye. That, that string comes in at about 250 grains. Okay, why that's important. And it's also twisted and twisted and coiled up. You can see how these strings are made. We've got a lot of them here. There's a lot of twisting, a lot of very tight twisting involved. <clears throat> why that becomes important is because when you're working with a string on a bow and it's under tension the factors that are going to really affect the performance of that string strength aside strength is ob obviously it has to be strong enough to hold the bow the other factors that are really going to affect the performance of a bow string there's there's two of them that I've really found. And those two factors are stretch and mass. Okay, and when we're talking about sinew, that's why it makes such an excellent bow backing is it's so incredibly strong, right? But in order to make this, when you're cording it up, you guys have seen plenty of this, there are uh, Two ply twist is typically how guys are making strings. So you're doing a two ply twist, right? And you're twisting, pulling it over, twisting, pulling it over. If you twist this up and say you think, oh, well, it's not gonna be strong enough, and then you double it and you reverse twist it again. Okay, so that's called cording, when you would two ply twist it and then reverse it back on itself. 
and twist the initial cord that you made into another cord that's double the thickness. That is incredibly strong, but the problem you run into there and even into the strings that are two ply twisted or three ply twisted, twisted, twisted all the way. The issue you run into there is stretch. When those bow strings are pulled, when a bow string that's coiled up like this is pulled on the bow, all of that twisting acts a little bit like a spring when the bow is released and the bow goes to stop. That is actually absorbing some of the energy of the bow. It's, it's stopping after the release of the arrow. It's coming and that, instead of just going tight, that bowstring is stretching and coming back. And the more twisting that you have in a string, if it's twisted, 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 you've taken all those fibers that want to run parallel and you've twisted them all up and it makes it incredibly strong because you're evening out what could be thick and thin places but what's happening is all that that wanted to run parallel is now way twisted up and when you pull <clears throat> it's going to stretch you get the most amount of stretch that way you also have more fiber right within the same strand which that's going to lead to strength again but just like it makes sense to you guys if you have fibers that are running parallel and then you twist it up that cord is naturally going to get shorter right so then you have more fiber per length within that but that's going to add to the mass so we talked about <clears throat> stretch a little bit you really don't want a string that stretches you really don't want a bowstring that stretches that's going to rob performance so that's where like the plant-based materials shine a little bit more linen and we'll get into that later we'll do a video for the linen strings mass so the mass of a bowstring is a huge factor and one that is overlooked so often in the primitive discussions what you can pretty well rely on is that every 20 grains every 20 grains of bowstring weight is going to be about one foot per second of performance lost okay so we've got a fairly stout heavy bow here this bow is going to pull at 27 to 28 inches which is where i'm going to be pulling it this osage bow is going to be it's pulling between 65 and 70 pounds so that's a pretty stout bow right <clears throat> so when we're looking at the mass you have to have a heavy string i might get a little bit nervous if this lightest string was on there that would probably work for a 50 pound bow 45 50 pound bow and that's what i typically shoot it on is one of my flat bows so to have the breaking strength, you really have to be shooting a heavier, a heavier string. So the bare minimum with Sanu that I would recommend is uh, your, your string, say you're shooting a 50 pound bow, a 50 pound bow, your bow string within a given length, let's, let's generalize it. Let's say we're talking like a 64 or 66 inch bow. That's what I like to shoot, 64, 66, maybe 68 inch bow. A couple inches of string is not a, not a major deal here um, when we're talking length of the bow, unless we're getting drastic. But I'm talking about the style I like to shoot. So a 64 to a 68 inch bow. A Sanu string to be within the margin of safety. Let's make it easy and say a 50 pound bow. This makes the math easy. If you're shooting a 50 pound bow, your Sanu bow string is probably gonna weigh if you're making it on the light end, in grains, your Sanu string is probably gonna weigh about 250 grains for a 50 pound bow to be in the margin of safety. And that's gonna help you balance out you know, thin, thin places, thick places, and you're gonna to wanna to really stretch that thing as you're making it and there's, oh, okay, 20 grains, how much is that gonna rob me? Well, if you're talking a difference of 
you know, 130 grain difference in a string. It's, it's literally double the weight. So I can shoot a higher performance linen string. And that's what I kept going back to is I kept wanting to set Sanu aside and I kept wanting to go to a linen string. And I'm thinking, you know, Cordage has been around for forever. So linen or flax strings to me, they fit in the wheelhouse of primitive archery. They are not necessarily contextual with North America, but definitely, you know, all through Europe, the linen strings fit. Until I go, before I go down that rabbit hole too deep, <clears throat> what I'm getting at when we're talking mass, if I have a linen string that weighs 135 grains, whatever that falls at, and my sinew strings, the lightest I've ever made are like 240 grains. This beast that came out to where I felt that's going to be, you know, that's going to be strong enough and stout enough to go on this 70 pound bow. I didn't pre-weigh my material before I spun it. This string weighs 500 grains. So think of the difference between I could put a linen string on here that's and it's going to let it's going to weigh I I would wager it's right around 200 grains. It's probably less and it's going to be within the margin of safety. So we're talking in the margin of safety and it having enough strength and low enough mass, what, what does that bring us to today? I know this is long-winded, but what that, what that really brings us to today is what, uh, what we wanna get to for a super high performance string. So we want a string that's really, really strong, high breaking strength for a low amount of material that's not real, real, real twisted up, that doesn't stretch a ton and doesn't act like a coil spring.